Hello and welcome back. In today's video, I will show you how to add weather forecast data to your Power BI model. Let's take a look at this super simple report I built just to illustrate the use case. Here I have a set of different zip codes located in a bunch of different states. And what I do is if I click on individual states, zip codes rather, you will see that I will have the next five days forecasted. The temperature right now is shown in Celsius, but it's an easy calc to show it in Fahrenheit or you can actually change the way we acquire data to bring the data in Fahrenheit to begin with. So you can see that as I click on different zip codes here in Chicago, it's pretty cold. If I go to California, things are much warmer. If I go to Texas, you could see things are actually pretty warm there today. So we will learn how we can use Azure Map uh, component of Azure to be able to run uh, API queries against that to get the weather forecast data. There are many ways to get weather forecast data into Power BI. In this particular case, I'm using Azure Map. And uh, the only prerequisite for this uh, uh, tutorial to work is you have to have Azure Map set up and configured. And also you need to have some sort of pricing tier picked up. And uh, that's about it. So we're gonna be using the REST API for weather. So uh, Azure Map, comes with very rich set of capabilities. We're gonna be taking a look at this um, get daily forecast function, and we will be able to use this REST API to take our list of zip codes, send it as a parameter to the API call, and bring the next five year, five days of weather forecast back into Power BI. I know that sometimes my videos tend to be a little bit too long, so in this particular case, what I'll do is try to run through all the steps pretty quickly, and then all of the configuration steps I will document on my blog, and the link to the blog will be in the description of this video. So the overall approach is we're gonna call on this HTTP URL, pass the required parameters, turn it into a function Power BI, and then execute this function for all of the zip codes that we have in our table. And some of the parameters are, as you can see in the documentation, API version query is where you specify let long of your zip code, duration, how many days, 1, 5, 10, 25, 45, language, and also you can specify the unit, whether you want it to be imperial or metric. And that's gonna be for, for rain, uh, millimeters or inches, or for temperature, Fahrenheit versus Celsius. So let's hop in Power BI and Power Query specifically and see if we can get this thing to work. The first thing we're gonna do is click on new source and pick web as our source for data. Now what we're gonna do is instead of doing basic, we're gonna click on advanced. And now all we need to do is populate all of the required URL parts. Okay, now here's the fun part. Now that we've clicked on advanced for uh, our web data source, we have to populate all of the required REST API components. So the first one is the call to the actual REST API. The next one is you have to specify the API version. It's 1.1. One, one. I will zoom in if I don't forget. So it's easy for you guys to see. Then we specify the query. And the query is latin long for the zip code. I just typed in 1470. So I think it's somewhere in New York. Then I specify the duration. In my case, it's going to be five days. And then, as you can see, I have two fields that I've populated but not completed. Here I have subscription key. And at the bottom, I have HTTP request header parameter optional. And then I specify this uh, HTTP parameter X, MS, client ID. So how do you populate these two values? So in order to populate those two values, you have to go to your Azure account, find your Azure map, go to authentication, and you need to write down your client ID in one of the primary keys. So the client ID will go to your HTTP header and the primary key will go into the subscription, uh, what do we call it, subscription key. So don't forget, client ID goes here, and then the key goes here. If you have populated everything correctly, you can hit OK, and the function call will be executed, and you will get the weather forecast for the zip code located in 47 let long. I've populated those two parameters for my Azure subscription, and as you can see for that zip code, I now have five records, one for every day. And if you scroll to the right, you will see you get a ton of different forecast metric. I got everything in uh, Celsius. So we're getting temperature, mean, max, rain, severity, uh, weather and shade, uh, very, very long list of different metrics that you could use for your weather forecast. Now, if you're an advanced Power BI Power Query user, that's probably all you needed to, do, to know to get going. 
If you're a beginner, I will show you how to actually take this function, uh, sorry, this API call and turn it into a Power Query function and then show you how to actually call on that function so that you can populate forecasts for however many zip codes that you might have. The first step that I will do is I will rename this function call to something that's easy to understand. I'm gonna call it weather forecast lookup. I will also add two parameters, one for lat. So you right click, you say new parameter, pull it in. We're gonna call it lat. And the type will be uh, decimal number, value will be 40. And then we're gonna add one more, call it long, type decimal number, and the value will be 70. The next step is we're gonna click on our weather forecast lookup and click on source and as you will see here there's going to be you can expand it i don't want to expand it so that you guys cannot see my key and account information basically what we want to do is we want to replace this 40 with the lead and 70 with the long so let me go ahead and type that in so now if you take a look at my source you will see that 40 and 70 are replaced with lead and long uh, i did misspoke earlier when you create these parameters Please make sure that they're actually um, not decimal, but rather they are uh, text type so that we don't have to deal with type conversion. So make those parameters lead and long to be text and then replace uh, 40 and 70 in our lookup. If you click on source, you see that all I did is um, just replace, I will zoom in so it's easy for you guys to see. And also you can look into my blog and see the exact uh, syntax for this replacement. The next thing that I did was I added a list of US zip codes. I will specify the source. Uh, it's somewhere in, on GitHub and it has all of the zip codes and let longs, very convenient. And all I do is I don't want to do it for all 60 however many zip codes we have in US. Uh, I just want to take a look at some of them and I just want to look at 100 zip codes for now. Uh, just for the purpose of this demo. Now we have the list of zip codes that we would like to get forecast for, and we have our code that does a lookup for the hard-coded lat and long and returns the forecast. So now what we want to do is we want to do the same thing that we're doing for hard-coded lat and long and do it for all of the zip codes in my list. So what I need to do is I need to convert this piece of code that does a lookup with hard-coded values into a function. So the way I do it is I just right click say create a function and I just specify the function name. So as you can see, I named the function fn lookup forecast, click OK. So this will create my function. And now I can call that function from here. So how do I call on a function? Well, you click on the data set, you go to add column and you say invoke function. This will say which uh, column it will be. Uh, let's say it's going to be forecast and the function that you're going to be calling is fn and the let will come from the let column and the lang, uh, long will be column name and the column name will be long. So now function takes two parameters, let and long, and I'm just saying that I'm going to take two respective columns from my data set and click on OK. Now what this code will do, it will execute the function and it says that the result of it is a table. So I'm going to click here. I'm going to say do not use original column name as prefix. Click OK. And you will see that now we have all of those columns available to us and we're ready to do our forecasting. All I need to do now is click home, close and apply, and this will pull in all of the forecasts for all of my zip codes. And now as I'm looking into my result set, I got my zip codes, I got all of my weather forecast data, and I'm ready to do some damage with weather forecasts. And that's about it, nothing fancy, but hopefully something useful. And thanks for stopping by, and I'm hoping to see you back very soon.